So we interrupt regularly scheduled programming because my water pump is just a screaming. So we're back in the Suzuki uh, manual for the uh, pump removal and installation. And you can see in the manual, it actually details, oh man, it is a lot of trouble. They actually replace this thing's multiple components have to be removed. The exhaust manifolds, the front end, the rad. I'm not doing that. I'm hoping I can get away with just actually replacing the, uh, the flange with the pump proper, the impeller actually on it. Um, and the, that part is actually available. I've actually acquired it again. Okay, my, lately my favorite source for parts rock all there's the part number this is the two liter engine again if the uh, other variants of the engine are different i have no idea but there's the part number uh kit actually comes with a, a gasket and an o-ring and uh, of course the pump itself so i think the access for this is going to be a wee bit of a bugger so uh we'll get the car up on the jack stands or ramps and um we'll see how it goes we'll start we'll drain the system and start looking for access I should mention here, actually, here's the price of the pump. This is an American, so uh, that converted to Canadian dollars. I think it was about $60 Canadian uh, for the pump. Uh, unbelievable, right? Shipped, there was another 10 bucks or something like that. And um, I hope this note doesn't come back to haunt me here during this job. I guess we'll find out. Let's see, the water pump is trapped pretty nicely between a bunch of components here. Looks like we'll certainly have to remove the, uh, the front engine mount in order to get some access. So. We'll uh, support the engine from the bottom, of course. Uh, I've got a crossbar to support it to the top, but it looks like there's very little shoulder on the inner fenders here to pick up the crossbar, so I guess we'll support it to the bottom. Um, yeah, remove the, or at least uh, dismount the compressor and swing it out of the way. This is gonna be a challenge, access-wise, for me anyway. We'll see how she... So first things first, we'll drain the system. So we'll remove the cap. Make sure you take heed of the warning, of course. Do not open this when it's hot or pressurized. Uh, a scalding is, uh, would be, uh, you'd be getting off lucky if all you ended up with a scalding. So uh, make sure the system's depressurized. Do not push down. Rotate it to the stop. And then push down. And it'll come off. So we want the system to be able to vent. You can see it's completely full, of course. So we'll go down underneath, get to the drain cock, which has never been open on this car, so I hope it's not going to cause me any grief. Okay, so I just got myself a pair of offset pliers here, and hopefully this will do it. You see? Not really the ideal, there we go. Still, but uh, plastic, so don't overdo it, or you could be sorry. You'll be any changing the ride as well. So this has never been open, certainly not by me. There we go, I'll let that drain. Okay, so I should have mentioned, the car is of course on jack stands and uh, chocks in the back. So the plastic is removed from uh, both sides. Uh, you have to do that of course before you get to the drain cock. So while it's draining, it looks like you can get a reasonable angle. There's the water pump pulley there. And before I remove the serpentine belt, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do this one-handed. I think those are 10 millimeter bolts. Yeah, so I'm just going to go around one at a time. And while the serpentine belt is holding tension on the pulley, so it doesn't move on me, uh, I might have to rotate things a wee bit. But I'm going to remove those bolts, four bolts, on the face of the uh, the uh, flange for the pump input. And uh, we'll slack those off, get that out of the way. Uh, we'll slack them off, then remove the serpentine belt and get that out of the way. So, so, so far so good. They actually were uh, no trouble at all. They have got them loose, so I'm just going to remove the serpentine belt. So. You've seen me do this a couple of dozen times by now. Uh, 14 millimeter, uh, rotate the, uh, the tensioner, uh, through bolt, the through bolt on the tensioner, clockwise, and just slip the belt off. I don't know if I can do it one handed. Sorry, there you go, two handed, but we're... so you can see the belt is loose. Just ease the belt tensioner back again. 14 millimeter socket. There we go. All four bolts are removed from the pulley and the water pump. So the pulley itself is a wee bit reluctant to come off. I'm hoping I can put a lever in here and with just a wee bit of persuasion. Don't overdo it, of course. You don't want to damage it and bend it. In. <laughs> had to drop the cam there for a second. Had to use two hands. But sure enough, the wee bit of persuasion pulley is. Okay, so we're on the bump side of the compressor here. There's actually uh, four 12 millimeter bolts that need to be removed on uh, basically the four corners of the compressor. So 
Yeah, they're gonna take a wee bit. They're gonna be tight. So all the bolts are extracted around the periphery of the flange, and there's two three bolts. The periphery are all 10 mil, and uh, the three bolts are 12, and there's also one with a clamp here that's also a 12. So you'll need every combination of ratcheting, box end, and offset 10 and 12 mil that you've got, uh, both quarter and three eighths. This particular one here, which is between the two, uh, the two standoffs, if you will, for the through bolts. That one there is a bugger because of the proximity of the, uh, to the to the block. That one there took as long as all the other bolts combined, I think. So, uh, yeah. So be prepared for that. So I've got the uh, still haven't removed the engine mount um, because I'm lazy and don't like doing any extra work. And I know that the more you touch, the more likelihood there is that you're going to damage something. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So I've got it. I've got it um, all unbolted. It's just basically hanging on the sealant now and the uh, guide pins, so um, I think a combination of tapping, we uh, don't overdo it with the ball pin, but whatever mallets you can actually get in there, of course we, uh, you might need to get some levers in there and uh, just work it loose. So let's... Okay, so let me, see, let me save you the grief when you try to replace just this. So when I first got this package, I see there's an O-ring in it, and I think, well, I guess that's for another application, not ours. And there's also two indexing bushings, right? Well, that's because you need to remove the housing. So in addition to these two through bolts, there's two other bolts to actually remove the housing. There's an O-ring on the back of this housing where it actually meets with a block there. So you need to pull the, for the assembly forward because these two indexing bushings don't allow you to pull the face off of the pump, to pull the, the flange off of the, the housing because it's keyed, it's indexed in the two positions on the uh, these two positions here. Is indexed onto the uh, onto the block, so you can pound on this until the cows come home, until you actually slack the whole housing, pull it forward by removing the two additional bolts. You've already removed the two from the pump itself, then the two additional bolts, pull it forward, then the then the pump itself should be able to come off the face. So I'm going to take you underneath and uh, try to actually uh, extract that. out. I still haven't taken the engine mount off, so we'll see what happens. So this is tricky to do while I'm holding the camera, so I'm using the backside of my mirror here. That is one of the indexing pins I'm actually indexing bushings that I'm referring to. There's two of them, one's behind the structure here, but that's one of them. So that's why the whole assembly has to come adrift, move it forward, and then you'll be able to pull the face of the pump off. So I'm gonna try and bring this up. Get one handed here. Okay, I'm trying to try and get a jigsaw puzzle out. So there's the pump removed. Uh, it is possible, uh, to be fair, while I was pounding on it to get this off, I did actually knock the flange off, uh, which is just press fit onto the flange. So with this on, would it come out? Hard to say. However, we'll find out when that one goes back in, I guess. So again, I haven't removed the mount, but you can see those two bushings there. You must, you can pound on this all day long. You must take the housing adrift with the four bolts tall, pull it forward, and then you'll be able to extract it. Because with those keyed into the block, you're not going to go anywhere. So we just got a uh, green pad and uh, some WD-40 and uh, I'll take you underneath probably one of the most important parts of this job I would think although I've never done it before is actually getting the face of a pump yeah, so here's the oh you can see it right here so getting this flange actually clean you know just WD-40 it up keep scouring away gently until you actually get this as pristine as you can get it because if there is any residual silicone left on there from the last uh, or last amatic sealer or whatever it is uh, on there from the last application um, could cause grief and this is a lot of grief you do not want to have to do this a second time because it's leaking that's always a possibility of course I'm, I'm trying to be particular as I can to make sure that doesn't happen. so in this package as I said it does come with an o-ring and that's the o-ring that you need right there it's not actually shown on the drawing but when you remove the housing there's an O-ring on the back side of this, and the manual does tell you to uh, use a new O-ring. So that's what the O-ring is for in the kit, right? All, all makes sense. But if you've not done it, and keep in mind the manual doesn't detail this because they're expecting you to change it as an assembly, hence the caution, right? So that's the new O-ring. That's the old one removed on the back side. Make sure the uh, interfacing surfaces are scrupulously clean. Again, otherwise you might be in there doing this again. Who needs so I've decided to go with paper gasket that actually comes with the pump assembly because uh, I think the likelihood of me getting this in place without actually disturbing the, the surround the sealant is actually slim to none because of the uh, because of the struggle to actually get this in place. So I'm going to go with the paper gasket instead. I've got a uh, gasket tacked up on both sides and uh, 
one for the piston. So there's the new pump assembly in place. I never did remove the engine mount because everything's pretty much done for the bottom side. I don't really see the point in removing the engine mount, to be honest. Some other people did. Uh, yeah, it is a struggle. So I've torqued up the, uh, I've just hand, I've snugged them up. A wee bit beyond snug. Tight, but no ridiculous. Uh, the 10 mil millimeter bolts that are in the all around the periphery of the, uh, um, the flange where the pump actually meets to the housing itself. Um, the manual doesn't show you a procedure for this pump procedure, of course, it's an assembly, so there is no torque spec given, use your judgment. And uh, the pump housing, of course, does have to be torqued because there's four bolts on the housing. I'll show you that on the drawing. Uh, to 216 inch pounds, the manual actually gives it to you. Sorry about that. But the manual actually gives it to you in the uh, foot pounds, but what's the point? There's no way in hell you're going to get a giant torque wrench under there or in there. It's way too tight. So that, uh, do the math, it's 216 inches. One other thing, actually, while I'm in here, uh, make sure you remove, drain the oil in the engine. Uh, this is due for oil change anyway, fortunately, so no big deal. And uh, remove the uh, the oil filter that actually sits right up there. I know the lighting's not very good, but you can see the oil filter is removed. It gives you a wee bit extra room to move the uh, compressor out of the way. Uh, should have mentioned that. The uh, pulley. For the water pump itself is, uh, is all cleaned up. I've got the four bolts locked tightened. We'll see if we can actually get this in situ. Okay, so there's the uh, pump pulley back in place. Uh, it's just snugged up on the bolts. We'll wait until the serpentine belt is back on to keep uh, the uh, it be turning and uh, a little bit anyway, or we'll maybe jam it or block it. We'll see and uh, tighten them up proper. For now, we're going to get the uh, compressor back in place. Four bolts that mount those. The paperwork for the uh, compressor, four bolts. Once again, the torque spec is uh, same as the uh, water pump housing, actually. Uh, 18 foot pounds or uh, 216 inch. Um, don't forget the harness here, little plastic clips that actually rip the wiring down. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that's the, uh, the wire down to the uh, to the clutch, the uh, mag clutch on the uh, on the compressor. So don't forget that. So that's all secured. So uh, I'm just going to uh, put the oil back in. If you recall, we drained it. Uh, service the oil again, put your filter in. Okay, so uh, the serpentine belt is all back on. And uh, what you can do is you can use the serp serpentine belt to actually hold the uh, pulley on the water pump and actually tighten it up. So you've got a 10 millimeter wrench, offset wrench ideally if you've got them, and an offset 14 millimeter on the, uh, on the uh, belt tensioner. So instead of actually loosening it, you can actually uh, turn the 14 millimeter wrench uh, counterclockwise, and you'll actually over tension the belt, and you'll hold the uh, you'll hold the water pump pulley nicely, and you can snug that up, and all the bolts are snugged up nicely. We uh, again a 10 millimeter offset, ideally. If you have it, I've already done all, all four of them; they're all tightened up. So the belt's all back in. Uh, the oil system's been serviced, new filter, and uh, just time to put the coolant back in. So I have uh, filled the uh, the system back with fresh coolant, the reservoirs to the full mark as well, and here's the capacities. If you're interested. Main is the manual transmission model, so uh, total of 6 litres, 5.3 in the system and 0.7. So uh, it's kind of convenient because these buttons are actually almost 4 litres, so I basically just use one of these and then actually just add the rest. So you end up with a wee bit stronger than a, than a I don't know, maybe a 60% mix-ish, something like that. Stronger than 50-50 similar. So uh, the manual actually says uh, when you service the system and uh, refill it, to run the system with the uh, cap actually off. Uh, until the uh, till the pan comes on, then shut the system down, let it cool, top it back up, and then put the cap back on. So uh, I'll be so that's it. It's all back in. It's uh, coolant system's all been serviced. Um, probably tomorrow, when the system actually when, once the system cools and draws in the uh, whatever it needs from the reservoir, I'll make sure that's topped up again. Um, yeah, so seems okay. No uh, no leaks. The red staining around that you see there is actually um, uh, tack gasket tack. Um, it's kind of useless. I kind of wasted my time with that, but that's where the red staining actually is. Thank God there's no green staining. Nothing seems to be leaking. So it is possible to change this water pump without removing the, uh, the engine mount. Uh, that's not required. It's kind of a waste of time. However, it is an, it, the, the takeaway from this video, if you get nothing else out of it, make sure that you realize that you have to dismount the housing so that you can take the uh, so that you can uh, get the uh, indexing bushings out and uh, pull the uh, pull the uh, the pump uh, proper the flange from the housing outboard um that's a must to undo the four bolts from the housing so uh, yeah that's it so i hope uh i hope this is helpful to somebody right that's it boys cheers